A lot of gamers enjoy a good challenge. It's good to feel like you've accomplished something, taking a deep breath and setting down your controller as you watch a tough boss fall. Playing on the highest difficulty of a game certainly changes some obvious aspects on the surface. You know, the standard changes of how much damage an enemy can take, how little health you have, and so on. In a game like The Last of Us, it really begins to morph your playstyle as you find new strategies to cope with the growing adversity around you. For instance, you can't just jump into the next fight. You have to take account of all of your surroundings and resources, maybe even checking patrol patterns of your enemies. With a lack of ammo and chances of a clean mission before dying, you're going to have to be a sure shot. For all you know, this is an easy section, and wasting a single strike of your melee weapon or an arrow from your bow may cost you the ability to sneak through something more dangerous down the line. You can't afford to waste your tools. And you certainly can't rely on companions. They may stun enemies and occasionally do a decent amount of damage, but they will rarely protect you, especially if they are busy focusing on another enemy in the area. All of this makes The Last of Us more difficult on the surface, but what about how the difficulty affects the rest of the game, and the experience as a whole? And how about the way difficulty affects games in general, especially those that don't scale their difficulties well? I think we'll figure all of this out as we peel back the design of difficulty in gaming, as we find out what's so great about The Last of Us. So, let's talk about difficulty. As I said, there are games that do it well, and games that... don't. Or at least, not as well. In order to construct a bit of reference, let's talk about two other games that have come out in the last few years. Those being The Witcher 3 and Call of Duty Black Ops 3. If you've played either of these games on their respective highest difficulties, Death March and Realistic, then you'll know what I'm talking about. In both of these games, you're not the standard inhabitant of these worlds. You're someone special, and everyone treats you as such. You are a force to be reckoned with, and though you supposedly excel in your field, the game wants you to feel like you don't, and that's really odd to me. Before we get into talking about these games, let me cover my theory on difficulty, just so we're all on the same page. As a game increases in difficulty, it should feel like it's reaching its truest form. With each difficulty increase, the game should become more and more accurate to how that situation would realistically play out. What a lot of video games fail to do is properly scale their difficulty system to make this true. Instead, players are expected to play at the second or third lowest difficulty depending on options, and then the game tries to be more and more frustrating and ridiculous in its expectations as you increase to the highest available option. At a certain point, many games just become a feat of repetition, timing, and sheer luck to complete on the highest difficulty. For a very few number of games, this may be appropriate, but it shouldn't be the norm. Back to the games mentioned earlier, we see different versions of this taking play. First off, in The Witcher 3, the difficulty level of Death March is expected to give you exactly what it has in the name. In fact, the game blatantly tells you, hey, if you want to actually enjoy the story, maybe play on one of these lower difficulties. Because at least the developers have accepted the fact that focusing so much on the ferociously unforgiving world around you will take away from the story that was available to the player, while you relentlessly grind for experience just to be at the expected level to take on the next beast. The Witcher is at least self-aware in warning you of this, but it's a bit of a shame that you can't enjoy both the smooth story and challenging gameplay at the same time. In the case of Call of Duty Black Ops 3, the realistic difficulty goes beyond even the restrictions of veteran difficulty in other Call of Duty entries to reach the point in which enemies still take several bullets, if not whole magazines or multiple missiles to take down, but you will fall victim to a single bullet. And in all honesty, that is a horrible justification of realistic, as the difficulty states. There are huge stretches of the game where you are left up to pure chance of the AI's decisions that may give you a single spare second to get a shot in to save your life. Otherwise, your enemies are going to be perfectly programmed to make your mission a living nightmare. Both of these games seem to have lost their way and are excellent examples of improperly scaled systems of difficulty. The difficulty needs to fit the circumstance. If you're the survival expert or the super soldier or the mythical bounty hunter, then you better feel powerful. However, the whole impact is lost when you're just told you're powerful. I don't want to be told how cool my character is, I want to feel the same amount of success through my own actions. And this doesn't mean, well, if I play on the easiest difficulty, then everything will be a breeze because that's how powerful I am. Instead, the lower the difficulty, the less rewarding completing your goals becomes. 
One issue when it comes to difficulty in games is, how should difficulty work? Well, that's not easily answered. After all, every game is different, and every expectation between game and player should be uniquely fitted in both directions. Otherwise, we end up with the same exact experience every time we play something. But it's easy to point out an unfortunately common wrong way to create difficulty, and that's just how long things take you to complete. There is a big difference in video games when it comes to the fine line of either wasting your time or actually testing your patience. In many games, the idea of making something more difficult comes with making it take longer, like doing less damage to huge enemies in RPGs or making you wait a while for new creations in simulations and strategy games. In action games, however, speed is very important. You have to balance back and forth between fast-paced and explosive and quiet and sneaky. There are games that do this very well, and they usually have the greatest tension when you feel the difference between the speeds of the game. Games like Metal Gear Solid, some aspects of Assassin's Creed, and of course, The Last of Us. In The Last of Us, you may have to take your time on any difficulty, especially if you're a fan of the stealthy approach. However, on the higher difficulties, taking your time is absolutely essential. You simply don't have enough equipment, health, or ammo to go barreling through a situation. So instead, you have to lie low and track your enemy's movements. Maybe quietly explore the location to get a good point of view. Often, when you lose a stealth opportunity in a video game, it seems like a great chance to go loud and just start killing every enemy in sight. But considering your supplies on the highest difficulties of The Last of Us, you may have to actually consider getting quiet again. Even if you've messed up, you don't have to stay loud. The option to run and hide is completely available to you. Enemies will forget where you are and have to take new patrol paths to find you again. Sneaking back to the shadows serves a great purpose, but you have to be patient because this is the most dangerous game. And in a fourth wall sense, losing your progress is all of the tension you need. Grounded difficulty is the most realistic way to play the game, which coincidentally makes this relatively real in-game universe feel that much more powerful. Joel and Ellie aren't exactly superheroes, and this takes away that main character shield that so many TV, movie, and video game characters rely on in order to simply survive. There's no reason to be able to listen to enemies through walls like Daredevil. Grounded difficulty brings the characters back to their human state of survival. Every decision is life and death, just as this post-apocalyptic situation would create. The only way you're getting through this is by keeping mind of every factor of your survival, because any wrong turn can easily be the end. Every death is truly where it would have ended for Joel. In this mindset, we see how every lower difficulty adds a small benefit to make the game more player-friendly, but also a little less realistic. That's not specifically a negative point, though. After all, we often accept that games are not going to be realistic from the moment we put the disc in. Seeing this game from a more desperate point of view dramatically changes the lore that you piece together as you progress. The Last of Us is already excellently sprinkled with little bits of humanity and missable subplots throughout the game in the form of dialogue and collectibles, many of which you'd be lucky to stumble across. However, reaching a torn journal page means something entirely different when you've struggled four times as long and focused four times as diligently than any easier playthrough. Knowing how difficult it has been to progress to wherever you are in the game makes it that much harder to read that random kid's diary that you found in a house you were looting. Just processing the horrors and close calls of this apocalyptic world that you've already witnessed, it's hard to imagine that this random child is possibly handling it well if they're even still alive. It's a very bleak point of view, but in the world that Naughty Dog has constructed for us, it's incredibly fitting to really put everything into the same mindset. In the nature of storytelling, this is all one world. This even applies to the villains and random goons you come across throughout the game. We're not talking about the clickers and infected, but the humans that supposedly get in your way. On the lower difficulties, it's easier to forget that these random characters are other people in this world trying just as hard as you to stay alive, and they won't mess around. Playing The Last of Us on anything other than the easiest difficulty, you really start to believe that all of these random enemy characters really want you dead. Not particularly out of malice, although I'm sure the clickers aren't exactly feeling empathetic, but all of these other people are just trying to survive. You are a threat to them. In this crazy, infection-ridden, post-apocalyptic world, these thugs, as you see them, are also people trying to keep either themselves or their groups alive. It makes sense why it would be difficult to fight for your life when obviously any other human being would be doing the exact same as you. Crafting the world around the difficulty and the difficulty around the world is a very fine talent that not every development studio can do well, but in The Last of Us, this chaotic, scary, exciting world may be the closest we can get.
Everyone wants something different out of their games. Some people want puzzles, some want stories, others just want to look at a well-crafted world for hours at a time. However, one thing that every player wants is a fitting challenge. From 0 to 100% of difficulty, you don't want to be surprised, no matter where you fall. It's tricky to craft games that provide just the right experience in all of these aspects, because sometimes just one little thing can throw you out of your enjoyment. And frustration can be a big part of that, especially if you just want to get on to the next part of the game that you do enjoy. The Last of Us, or even survival horror games in general, may not be for every gamer, especially as that genre is known for its overly specific gameplay just to survive. The Last of Us is no exception to its pickiness. But few games have such a perfect scale of realism, difficulty, and overall experience, and that is what's so great about The Last of Us. Thank you all for joining us on this episode of What's So Great About Gaming as we scavenge through the most difficult apocalypse in The Last of Us. Sometimes it's hard to focus on the good aspects of gaming, especially with the jaded commentary world we live in right now, but there's so much out there for us to explore. If you think the same way, consider subscribing to be a part of our community so you're always in on the discussions. If you have a favorite series or a single game that you think is great, leave a comment of your choice and we'll look into it. Thanks again for watching. Now go play a great game. We'll see you next time. Thank you.